Hi, you have found the podcast Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. I am Julie Roca, and I absolutely love the holidays. I love the music. I love the parties. I love the special things that we do, like our family does a Christmas walk all the way to Paisano's to eat pizza and look at the lights. Um, I just love everything about it. The big gatherings, can't get enough of it. But... I have realized over the years that as we age, sometimes we change that approach. And so today I brought a very good friend of mine who has had her pulse on the finger of um, geriatric care for many years. Penny Bryan from Concierge Care is uh, just a very dear friend who has the same heart that I do for our seniors and... um, for fun. You have a spirit of fun, Penny. I try my best. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely try my best every day, but I mean, it's easy to have fun when you're doing something you're passionate about. I know. It's wonderful. So what brought you into the healthcare world? My passion for geriatrics started before nursing school. I was in my early 20s. I actually took a job working as a hairdresser in one of the local facilities. Yep, yep. I did that um, for about seven or eight years, not even thinking about going to nursing school. Wow. But I just fell in love with the residents, and that started it. <laughs> and so you're a nurse. Yes. But I have only known you as being a kind of the boots on the ground person here in Gainesville for concierge care. Yes. Um, and I think because of that, you and I have both gotten to really see um, that seniors approach the holidays a little bit differently than we might. And I think you had a conversation with your mom recently that I am I, I would did. love to share a little bit. I did. I called her just to get some information. Just wanted to hear her perspective. Mm-hmm. I told her what I was doing. Well, of course, it started the whole conversation. She thought I was already trying to plan for the holidays, which, number one. You kind of are. Showed, but it showed <laughs> me that she was already feeling overwhelmed. Oh, wow. So I kind of had to take a step back and said, no, I'm just, you know, wanting to see what kind of things you like for the holidays. And your mom is how old? She will be 90 on December okay. 11th. Okay. Yeah, we're excited. So, yeah, so she is a, still kind of a spring chicken, but not as young as She's you and me. She's a very young 90. Yes, that's She's what She's very I active, super active, um, and mentally I think she thinks she's probably 60. Hey, I, that's <laughs> that's going to be me at 90, I'm sure. Yeah, me 90 is going to be the me new too. 60. I have good genes. <laughs> <laughs> I have good genes. So. so tell me some of the things that uh, you discovered when you were having discussions with your mom, who was also very much like you about the holidays and really loved. And my mom was very much like you, loved the whole everything Christmas, dress mm-hmm. in Christmas clothes, Um all the cookie baking, the family get-togethers, the um, music, the church services. I mean, Christmas has been her holiday. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I ask her, what what do you like about Christmas? What do you want to do? And she's like, well, I don't think we should worry about all the big get-togethers. That's interesting. She's like, um, I think we just need to focus on, you know, what everybody else needs to do. Mm-hmm. And so I asked her, I'm like, well, do you like to go shopping? Well, not really. It's kind of depressing to shop because um, I don't need to buy anything and I'm 90. I don't know if I'll be around to use it. Wow. And then um, I asked her if she enjoyed large get-togethers and she said not really. But I did notice the last year that we had large get-togethers that she kind of um, just looked lost. Now, how a, her hearing has changed over her, the years, hasn't her it? Her hearing has gotten much worse. Yep. And so to be in a large crowd, she can't right. She can't follow the conversations. We had a great conversation with Dr. Swami recently, and he said even with hearing aids, mm-hmm. sometimes they can't pick out the conversations and follow them. So that would be right. a reason why a loved one might sit by themselves kind of in a corner and not be able to engage. She does. That's exactly... And so um, she really enjoys one-on-one time. So mm-hmm. whether it's one-on-one, you know, baking cookies, one-on-one driving around looking at Christmas lights. Great idea. Um, yeah. You know, she may not be able to physically go 
do the Swanee lights where you have to do a lot of walking, but put her in the car, give her hot chocolate and drive around the neighborhood with just two or three of us. She loved that part. Nice. So, yeah. So nice. I mean, it kind of gave her the sense of being, you know, participating, but not having to feel like she was overwhelmed. And now, like, what about big church services and stuff? Because I grew up, that was the core Mm -hmm. of Christmas, right? Is, you know, it was about Christ's birth and it was a candle. We had a beautiful candlelight service that has, you know, an hour and a half or so of the Christmas music and the candles and all of that. And I just always kind of assumed that that was something that I was always going to want to do. And then as I've gotten older, I have noticed sometimes the older generation cannot even enjoy that. Unless they have um, hearing impaired capabilities. I know some Uh of the churches do. Um, They have little headsets and things they can wear, which make a huge difference because it blocks out the Mm -hmm. other noise. Um, If there's a lot of music, she does well with a lot of music because, you know, she knows the words. So she can sing along. So she can participate. Absolutely. So another way around that I have noticed recently more opportunity has popped up. Um, During COVID, churches started doing a lot more um, filming. Mm -hmm. So mm-hmm. that people that normally cannot get out anymore or they're okay. overwhelmed by the chaos of getting out, mm-hmm. um, they can sit there and enjoy a service. They can That's sing nice. along. Yes. Uh, you can turn it on the sound bar. So if there's an issue with hearing, um, adjust the hearing aids so that they can fully appreciate it. And you can sit there with your loved one and enjoy the service mm-hmm. with them so they don't feel like they're completely alone. Right, right. She does that. And she, you know, I think just – geriatrics in general anything to do with children as long as it's not overwhelming Mm -hmm. because to them you know christmas is about the kids yeah and you know so i think if for them to even watch a child's program that they don't necessarily have to follow along on great yes i mean or watch kids sing you know the some i know like the facilities have the kids come around and Mm -hmm. sing I know they really enjoy that. They really do. And they might even enjoy having a kid come and read to them some of the Christmas stories. Um, I love your idea of having uh, kids come over to watch a a kid's movie Mm -hmm. because things like a Charlie Brown's Christmas, um, my grandfather would get very excited about that. Um, Even with dementia, he would still get very excited about it because they were kind of familiar with it. So watching some of those... um, Frosty the Snowman maybe might be some things that they would be familiar with. More of the old school. Some of the older school things. Some of the young, some of the kids haven't seen that, so yeah, it's yeah. good for them to share that together. Yeah, <laughs> even uh, it, it prancer and mm-hmm. having some reindeer chow um, can make it fun for the kids. Can make it fun for the adults. One of the things that I tell people is to just kind of regulate the chaos and the confusion when you do have the kids over. If you're having all the kids over and all of their parents and the cousins and everything, a lot of times what happens is the adults get together and they start talking Mm -hmm. and they're not noticing the kids are running everywhere. And if you're watching your senior loved one, they're likely sitting somewhere getting very agitated and not having a good time. That's exactly right. That, I've seen that happen. So monitor. Mm-hmm. When you're going to have the kids over, do something like have a movie at night right. with some snacks where it's quiet and kind of contained. Or even just maybe two kids at a time. Yeah. Smaller, you know, let, her, let them enjoy like two of the grandchildren at a time instead of all 10 of them. Yes. Or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just to have that, like I said, it all goes back to just the more one-on-one mm-hmm. personal time and doesn't have to be anything huge and fancy it just you know just the time you yeah know, they don't need gifts they don't need they really they don't they just need time <laughs> they really don't they really don't care about the stuff that's no. one thing i have noticed over the years uh now if you want to know some stuff soft blankets are usually a great go-to um little candies and mm-hmm. treats are usually a fun thing for them and fun uh, cozy socks Yes, cozy socks. <laughs> I, that is that is my gift list, um, the short gift list for anyone that is, you know, 75 and Anything over. that'll make them warm. <laughs> yes, anything that'll make them warm. Um, and I, the reason I wanted you in particular today is because I wanted to talk an, about another facet of this. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I am part of caregiving.com as well as the placement company here locally in Gainesville. And one of the things that I have been painfully aware of is that while our loved ones are kind of pulling back and not wanting to participate in anything that's chaotic and outside, the caregivers so frequently get stuck missing out. And if it were me, that would break my heart because I'm still in that mode where I want Mm -hmm. all the chaos Mm -hmm. and I want all that fun. So one of the things that I really value about uh, concierge care is that you guys will do a respite for a minimum of four hours. We do. We don't have weekly minimums. We don't have um, commitments. So I usually tell people, you know, they can sign up and just um, use it as they need to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that way, just so they can look after their own health. I mean, that's the first conversation I have, you know, with a spouse dealing with someone with dementia like okay i know we're here to take care of your husband yes but you need to come first yeah because without you then he's going to be in trouble so um you know and taking care of yourself first is self-care yeah taking that break and so whether we can go in and help them just for the four hours um, you know, once a week or if it, you know, just on an occasion, yeah. if they want to go out with family, you know, just anything like that. Yes, because your loved one may want to sit in their recliner and not interact with 20 right. people in the family, but you need that. That's yes, part of absolutely. what keeps us going. And I'm going to say this about the four hours. I have sat there and thought about it and thought about it. Four hours <laughs> is not enough time. So take six hours. Get six hours sure. and go shopping. Get a pedicure. Um, just breathe in and out and get yourself prepared. Maybe you even take that – but a couple of those hours um, and go to one of those services. Mm -hmm. Uh, Go see the Hallelujah Chorus if that's your jam. Uh, Go see the Nutcracker if that's your thing. We can take care of them all weekend if you want to take a whole weekend to do it. Oh, hey, yeah. (laughs) But it's nice to get people started. Sometimes that guilt, they just don't want to go. You know, they feel so guilty to even be leaving them. So when you kind of offer just the four hours, That kind Mm -hmm. of starts them thinking, okay, I can do that. That's true. And especially around the holidays, I just want to emphasize caregivers, you can go and make some time for yourself. You will only be better for your loved ones. You will only be better. Absolutely. So while they need more quiet and much more controlled environment, it's so important for the caregiver to be active, to be active, to keep their health in Mm -hmm. check because their mental health is really a stressor that will decline their physical health. So, I agree. I mean, until I agree. We can, and that's why, you know, it's so important that they take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah. So this is not just a podcast for Gainesville, Florida. This is a podcast for people everywhere. So if if they're not here in Gainesville and they are kind of looking for that respite opportunity, what is some advice that you have that they should ask First, reach out to your family and your friends because there's a lot of times that they're willing to help. That's true. you just have to ask. And uh, a lot of times if you reach out to your church, there may be a program that they have that actually provides a couple of hours Mm -hmm. of respite in there too. And there are um, communities that have um, day stay programs where they could Mm -hmm. at least utilize that during the day. Um, You know, and of course there's companies all over that provide the same kind of care that we do. I mean, we provide care throughout the whole state of Florida, but there's companies across the nation that do that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so check with your local family and friends and see who they recommend and check with your doctor. Usually the doctor has very good recommendations. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought about that. The social worker at your doctor's office is usually a great source. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think first start with your family and your friends because then it's a familiar person. And you might be afraid to ask, but they're willing to help. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you need the time and your loved one needs for you to take the time. Do you have any other thoughts for us, Penny, before we leave? Um, I think mainly just taking the time to spend time with your seniors this year. Um, You know, it's fun to do the festive things, but to also just do the one-on-one and just Mm -hmm. to remember that 
they may not all be filled with the same joy that we're all feeling. Yep. For them, it's a really difficult time. So just to be aware of the fact that, you know, they may not enjoy the same things that they used to. Exactly. And you might need to scale everything back a little bit. Yep, yep. And I think that, you know, my children look at me and how I do things around the holidays, and I can see them thinking, oh, well, this is really important to mom right. in 30 or 40 years. And honestly, it might not be as important to me at that point. So you have to take a step back right. and say, all right, is that really what mom or dad wants? Or is that what they used to want? when they right. were much younger. And just because mom used to love to go on marathon shopping days, um, it could be <laughs> that now she still likes to go shop and she wants to feel included, but let's mm -hmm. just maybe go to one store and then go to lunch. Oh, yeah. You know, so she has the same experience, but not the overwhelming. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so just kind of scaling everything back. You know, we're going to do cookie decorating, but not 20 of us. We're going to do it with maybe three of us. Yep, yep, so exactly. just so she can still have the experience and not complicated cookies, things that have a lot of... Some of the cut and bake cookies that you can just sprinkle sure, the sprinkles on. Sure. That works. Try to keep everything, you know, yeah. to a minimum and simple. Yeah. So other than that, I think that that would be... I think that's that great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming, Penny, today. Oh, I think these were some really great ideas, and I hope that this helps you to uh, help your loved one get through uh, the holiday season and really be able to find some peace and some enjoyment. If you've liked this video, kind of even if you didn't love it, but just <laughs> like it anyways, and share it and subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. Definitely share it because, again, like I say every time, I think this is a tool that we want for others to be able to find. Thank you so much.